So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Ryan was his name. Oh, but no. This time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for Old Man Clown. I came upon them robbing a stagecoach, which wasn't surprising being they were such murderous thieves and bastards. The bandits wore red scarves, so I knew they worked for the old man. Over there! There! Get I did my best to help those poor people. Later, the attackers were dead, and I checked the stagecoach to see how many passengers were still breathing. None. It was then I wondered if the rocks weren't hiding more bandits. Was that all of them, or did I just hit the rear guard? I quickly got my answer. They attacked from on high like a patch of wood. They would appear in great numbers from the blood rain down lead on their hapless enemies' heads. Making use of the high ground, whatever else they had. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere. And they never seemed to be an end to it. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? What happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against an overwhelming enemy force. <laughs> See, at the time, I was still pretty brave, but often blunder into regrettable situations. I just kept shooting at anything I could see up in those damn rocks. I didn't see Ringo, but I knew he was with the Cowboys. He and Roscoe Bob had done me a dreadful wrong, and I was determined to have my revenge. But to get to Ringo, I knew I'd have to find my way past these other assholes first. He's getting away! I was running out of ammo. Another perfect example of my relative inexperience as a hunter of men. I immediately knew that a tactical retreat was called for, as my vengeful fury was much less impressive without the bullets to back it up. They managed to corner me. Trapped as I was, I was hiding my survival. Luckily, serendipity was on my side as I suddenly spotted a way out of my pit. As if the devil himself was after me. Bullets were whistling by my ears, but I wasn't about to roll over and die. I just kept running like there was no tomorrow. Because there wouldn't be, the client and his men caught up with me. As I was scurrying around those caves, I thought, what was I thinking? Going up against a gang like this. Nowhere to run! I just kept going, not knowing where the hell I was going.
needed ammunition. Fistful of dynamite to go along with that ammo. That stroke of good fortune, even the odds, had bolstered my confidence. It was time to turn the tables. Time for the prey to become the prey. Time for the hunter to become the hunter. Time. All right, Jesus, we get it. Right where you want it. That's right, Jack. Boys were not expecting that. No, sir. I came at them like a wild cat. I'm not giving you no bounds. for his sins. I yelled out at the top of my lungs, Blanton, I'm coming for you! A little stealth might have made more sense to be perfectly honest. Because that old fool had a gallon gun and enough bullets to last him till kingdom come. But I knew I could not let that deter me. <laughs> not if I was to find and kill Wendy. I needed to get that old man off that gun.
Most everyone thought it was the Ruales who had come up against him in Guadalupe Canyon. But it was just me. made it out of there alive, and told Ike and Billy Quentin that it wasn't a Mexican who took their father's life that day. They just assumed it was one of the Earps, and that little misunderstanding eventually led to that legendary gunfight at the old K Corral. <laughs> 